Hello everybody, this is Eon Chikini, your StarCraft 2 caster, back again. Some more StarCraft 2 commentaries. Today we're going to have a ZVT. I mean, I guess last time was a ZVT, so guess what? Two ZVTs, TVZs, however you propose to say it. Down here in the bottom right will be our T, our Terran Empire cast. He's going to be on the bottom right side of Ohana. His opponent with the Overlord. And the creepy base is going to be Uric. Uric. <laughs> I know he doesn't have a question mark in his name, but I don't know how to say that name. So, Uric, Uric, Uric. Um, I'm going to be saying that 10 different ways this whole game, so whatever. Anyways, our Blue Zerg put on the top left. And evidently, Empire Cast is streaming this. He didn't tell me about you streaming this. I'm commentating this. <laughs> Evidently, Oric is streaming too. Man, who isn't streaming these days? Just streamers galore. Five years for the win, people. Five years. Everybody go watch Oric stream. He's probably not streaming right now, but give it a check it out anyway. So, what do we got here for Cass? Cass is not going for a wall off versus Zerg. Quite interesting. Um, we saw. Uh, let's see, who was that? No, no, he walled off eventually. Not at the beginning, though. Interesting. It's always interesting to see these Terran players. Will they wall off? Will they not wall off? They must be pretty confident they're just not going to get like a 10 pooled or something like that. Because that would be a bad day. Uh, Overlord's being sent out across the map. Let's check the pathing we've got over here on the right side. Pretty good pathing. You can suicide this in later from over here. And on the left, this one will probably go down here somewhere. Keep an eye on either the third base or the natural. Both good scouting spots and a good spot to put an Overlord here. And I think there's even some... I don't know if these are high ground rocks or not. They're probably low ground. Yeah, these are these are low, so I don't think that'll qualify as high ground, so they'll be inefficient. But anyways, that's where he's going to. And we have a uh, hatchery going to go down. Pool already done, of course. So he can make a couple of zerglings if he wants to, but he's not going to go with it. One SCV here from Castles heading out across the map in a marine following it. If this is just going to be some type of bunker pressure, uh, not probably not. He's just going to go to the, the Zelnaga Tower up there. But he will scout it out. He's going to see a couple of Zerglings pop. No gas yet. So that's what he's really going to look for here. And heading out there. So just doing a little bit of scouting. And he's going to go back home. And quickly throwing down the command center. Now comes the wall off. This will probably just be like three supply depots. That's the that's the most common secondary wall off style we see Terran players go with. They either go with the suppl uh, barracks, supply depot, supply depot. Or if they're feeling risque, they can go with the supply depot times three. So out here in the middle of the map, we've got uh, one Marine and his buddy just now showing up. And an SCV versus four Zerglings, and they should be able to take that down pretty easily. And nice control there with that uh, SCV. And one Zergling goes down. Not a, two, not, not a loss. I mean, it's barely anything. 25 minerals, if that. So, Command Center is going to go down. Uh, it's popping up there. He's going to switch into an orbital, of course. That's the next best thing to do. And a gas already. That's a fairly quick gas from this build. Um, and there goes the factory. And another command center. Whoa, Cass really want to uh, just like completely dominate the Zerg player on macro this game. That's pretty wild. Two Zerglings will be taken out by two Marines. Focus right goes down. He's not going to get the Zerglings, but he will gain control of that Zell Naga Tower. Nice. Nice prize there. Take that Zell Naga Tower. Had to play with stream. Hard to play with stream. Oh, he must be lagging. Or maybe it's because he's got chat open and everybody in chat's telling him. <laughs> what he's doing wrong. Ah, ooh, Orc with a good PC. Doing a little bit of gloat in there. 100 plus FPS. <laughs> 99,000 FPS for Orc. Doesn't even care. Doesn't even care. Gas going down for Orc here. Nah, so he loves it. He's got a nice new computer and he's got a bunch of gas going up. So three gas going up there pretty much all at about the same time. Yep, actually pretty much all at the same time there. And a starport coming out here. So, wow. I mean, look at Oryx's base. What the... F uh, it's okay, I was about to say that better not be another command center. I will... I don't know what I'll do here, but... I mean, look at this. He's got three command centers now. And he's got tech. If... If Oryx would have put on any pressure... And I mean any pressure. If he would have made ten Zerglings... Cass would be like... Ugh, he would have been reeling from the amount of pressure Oryx putting on here. But Oryx is just kind of letting him have free reign here. Oryx is playing pretty safe. Um... I mean, with his opening, we saw a pool before Hatch, and he's got a lot of queens out now, but uh, Cass is just sitting in the money right now, 
And, uh, I mean, this build order for Cast is definitely get, is favored here over uh, Orcs, just considering Orc did not apply any pressure whatsoever. So Reactor going up here. Another barracks being built. Another barracks being built. Uh, Tech Lab going to go down. He's going to make a Starport. Yep, Starport there. And the Banshee's going to come out. He even has map control. How does a guy... Think about it. How does a guy going fast triple command center and teching get map control? I mean, at, at that point, Jesus, these, these queens and zerglings are so loud. <laughs> I mean, Oric is playing so safe right now, but I mean, considering his opponent, Cass, I mean, Cass is a very well known player. Um, one of the best European Terran players, so. Uh, Oric, not well as known, obviously, but he may be worried a little bit, so he's not being as aggressive as he obviously should be in this game. I mean, has he scattered it out? I think. I think he has. Yeah, he sees the command center there. He sees both of them, so he's probably thinking, okay, now he's even going to see the double gas scope of the expansion right now. What is he even looking at? I'm all, whoa. Whoops. Wrong hotkeys. There we go. Work. What does he see? Yeah. He's got some Zerglings running out, but speed is just now done, and he's going to try and do some damage now. I guess after he saw... All those command centers, he's probably thinking, okay, time to actually do something. But look at that, the Zerglings, I don't know if there's going to be enough here. The Marines and the Banshees and the Hellions are going to just kill all of them. He's going to trade Zerglings for Marines. Uh, but will it be enough? More reinforcements showing up. There's still a good number of Zerglings coming through here. His Oric is putting on the pressure, finally. But uh, he's going to have some more Marines out. He just needs a couple more Hellions. Those guys are pretty weak in the Banshee. We'll be able to clean up the rest of these Zerglings before he maybe gets two or three uh, SEV kills here, if he's lucky. And he hasn't gotten any yet. Oh, there we go. Gets his first one. Two guys get trapped out in the rain there. Zergling take him out. And there we go. Three Zergling kills. Wow. Called that one. Anyways, supply 86 uh, versus 72 for Cass. But you got to remember, Cass is on three bases uh, way before Orc. And he's got the tech. More Zergling sneaking in here. Banshee's doing a little bit of damage. Eight kills up for that Banshee. He's a corporal. Or she's a corporal, I should say. A lot of creep tumor going out here for Orc, and this is just something that Zerg players just do. Just like the thing to do, just have a shit ton of creep, have a lot of queens. And, uh, I mean, Zerg players just have so much creep now, and this is something I just I just love seeing in StarCraft. This is something that, you know, seems inherent. At least seemed, in, seemed inherent to me, like, two years ago when the game first came out. Just like, oh, there's going to be creep everywhere. But one thing that there is everywhere, there are Zerglings everywhere outside this base. And uh, Orc is going to trade once again, but that Banshee is getting a lot of free kills here. And here come some more SCV kills. He's going to grab a couple of them. Hasn't killed any yet. There goes one. Another one going to go down there. Nope. Medevac does show up. And another one gets picked off here. So Orc doing a little bit of harass, delaying mining on this third base, if nothing. But uh, he still is getting in the production uh, for the extra SCVs out of here. He is allowing himself to drop some mules there. Spore crawlers up here at the expansion. Plane. Nice and safe. Good saturation here. Could use two more, though. Baneling Nest going to go up. Another hatchery and a lair going up on the way. He's got a... Actually, no, that's a, that's a hive, not a lair. What am I talking about? Infestation pit. Pathogen glands about a third of the way done. And another hatchery going to go up here. Uh, at this point, Orc, I think, could just make a shit ton of units and just blast in here. I don't like these small attacks. I don't like that small attack there. I think you should go back, make like... Whoops, I need to put the production tab up before everyone yells at me. Stop yelling at me. Um, he just needs to make, I think, a lot of Zerglings at this point. Uh, Emperor Cast has lost his whole army, like, twice here. Uh, he's setting up a lot of defense here. Missile turret going up. He's making another command center. Um, uh, but, I mean, he's got, I mean, Orc has so much production at this point. He can just make a ton of Zerglings. That's something I'd really like to see. Like, I'd like to see Orc do, like, TSL Hyun style right now, where he just makes, like, 150 Zerglings. And makes, like, half of a Banelings and just, like, A-clicks into his base. I think that would be pretty good at this point. Upgrades, pretty much even for both players. 1-1 one, one for the Marines, and 1-1 one, one for the Zerglings. Double Gas going to go up at the fourth, bla fourth base of work. Still some more upgrades coming. Hive just about done. He's going to be able to research that Crackling upgrade on the way. Spore Crawler also being built. No high, or actually no, um, what was I going to say? Um, Spire Insight yet. So he's going to go for Brood Lords uh, anytime soon. Yep, going to go for Ultralisks instead. Usually, if they're going to go for the Broodlords, they um, they start the Spire about the time they start the uh, the Hive research, because that's pretty much the same, same timing here. But look at this creep spread. Orc all the way across the map, and the Banshee is going to get fungal, but he will take a Infester with him. No, he will not. Got it pretty low, though. And the Queen's finished the job there. That one Banshee did go down. Uh, tanks here on the high ground. Cass moving in position to take his fourth base. Um, he really has to watch out here. Cass is really going to have to have some amazing Marine splits. Uh, if he wants to deal with this combination here from Orc, he's got the Zerglings, the Banelings, the Infestors out. 
Crackling upgrade on the way, plus three also, and even Burrow. A lot of Zerglings coming out now. And uh, Orc is making his way to this base up here in the top left. He should be able to do a little bit of damage here, but the tanks are there. He's at least going to force a cancel and lift that. There he goes. Uh, so that was somewhat successful. And quickly going to switch that to a planetary. Marine drop heading over on the right side here and also on the left side here, uh, but that's going to be quickly spotted on the right side. They're going to drop Marines off anyway, dropping one down there to try and take out some infestors. Not going to happen. And oh no, flies right into two spore crawlers that we're happy to say hello. And two Marines luckily got out of there, but they will die. And drones are now revolting. They're going to get a couple kills here. They got three kills already, four or five. Even going to get maybe one more here if they target fire it. But no, he's busy elsewhere. Dropping over here on the right side. The drop goes down. So many Zerglings are going to pick it up. And he's forced to lift off once again. And the push through the middle. Here it goes. Scan goes in. He's going to take out both sides. Just pushing back the creep. The creep has been all the way on his side of the map for a while. He's got the Zell and Tower here in a really good position with those siege tanks. Provide the vision for those siege tanks. Drop comes down. Once again, he's going to be able to kill a couple more drones. Let's look at the working on 85 versus 71. And actually, Koss with more workers than Orc. Not really surprised there. There they go. Stimming up forward. He's going to be able to kill a lot. A lot of dudes here. But we have a big attack here. The tanks siege up the... Oh, wow. The tanks are right up the front. They take a lot of damage from the Banelings. And there go the Fungals and the Banelings. And Oric just cleans that up very easily. Um, and there's just like a tank and a Marauder left. But the do drop of the top right has done so much damage. He's killed essentially every single drone that was up here. Besides a couple in the gas. And Supply now favoring Cast though, out of all that. But considering he's got the macro lead, it's not really surprising. His production is pretty good. Eight Marines, four Marauders, one Siege Tank on the way. He's even making six more barracks. That is crazy amount of production he's going to have here pretty soon. So while Cast, um, I mean, I'm going to check the, uh, the loss thing here. So that's fairly even there. Even though the Terran has lost a little bit more just because of uh, Orc's early attacks that allowed him to pick off a lot of those Marines pretty easily. Uh, these, wow, these uh, Ultra Lisks are going to be completely maxed out here very soon as the 3 3 is going to be done here. And is he going to wait for that? He's just going to go and hold the Cell Naga Tower. Um, he should wait back. Uh, his Terran counter opponent here uh, is getting the 3 3 just now, starting plus 2 for the Siege Tanks on the way also. Uh, Cass getting a more of a defensive stance back here. I really like this positioning of this missile turret. I can see any in, uh, burrowed infestors coming along, like anywhere in this whole area. There's plenty of vision here to see everything. So, a really great placement for that missile turret over here on the left side. Plenty saturated, got the gas up as well, and look at, oh my gosh, what is this? Did, did he just watch the game I just casted where he's like, I'll make four star forts, <laughs> albeit it's about 10 minutes later than this, than uh, what Nama did, but still, a lot of star ports out here, and they're all going to be tech labs. Uh-oh, is this going to be battle cruisers? I don't know. Here we go, have a drop on the right side, next to the campfire, he's going to go in there and kill a couple more drones. Orc is going to come in with his whole army, should be able to clean this up pretty quickly. And eh, Fungal's going to go down. Will he be able to get the Medivac? So it looks like it one Spore Crawler's getting a couple hits in there. And that one will sneak out, though. Nope. Will it not? The Infestors say, You shall not pass. <laughs> they, that, I was doing an impression of the Infestor doing a bad impression of Gandalf. So just so no one com complains about my Gandalf impression. That was not me. So we're set up for another big attack here in the middle orc, getting ready for it, but Cass is completely maxed out in supply somehow. Uh, there's a lot of marauders out right now, and oh no, these marauders exactly what he needs to deal with these uh, these uh, ultras. Orc is kind of all bunched up here, and he really needs to get spread out if he wants to try and engage this. This is really not the best spot to engage. There's so many marauders there, I don't even know if he wants to try to engage that at this point. Drop over here on the left side, will get uh, intercepted those maxed out zerglings deal so much damage and look at the upgrades coming from Cass. Cass has just so much minerals to spend. He's like, I'll just start making upgrades that people don't even remember the names of anymore. So we got the Corvid Reactor, the Seeker Missile Upgrade and we're probably going to see Neo Frame Bunker Upgrade 2 in a time if this game goes on much longer. Ultra shows up, gets one kill and uh, Empire Cass is just being quite annoying with this bunker. Or sorry, this medevac. And there's a big attack here in the middle. Cass pushing his way forward and work just Saying, you know what? You can have it for the time being. Another drop here. Actually, the same drop uh, will get taken out. Queen focusing down on the medevac. That will fall. And that will fall. That will fall. There you go. <laughs> Marauders pushing up. They're going to drop that hatch so quick. But at the same time, 
Eric is thinking, you know what? I don't want to attack their army. Let's go for the Planetary Fortress. Let those ultras get in there. Those guys deal some serious damage versus those Planetary Fortress. There they go. Thing falls very quickly. And we have a small attack here. Going to go kill Hatch. And this is a Hatch killing squad if I've ever seen a Marauders, Marines, 3-3 three, three upgrades. He can just go for it there. Uh, and oh, Cast trying to get back into his base to defend the entrance there. Fungos go down. Zerglings charge in there. Uh, ultras in the back just kind of dealing damage to everything. There are uh, Ravens out, but... And the Ultras just crush through all of the Siege Tanks and Marauders. Fungals go down and Aura clears all that up. But he has to worry about what's left of his base here. This army uh, now moving up. He should be able to kill this Hatcher if he just stims and goes for it. No, Fungal comes up here just in the nick of time. Zergling ship, and that is going to get cleaned up by Aura. So now let's check the supply. 142 versus 132. Pretty even, but let's look at mining bases. We have a base up here in the top right and one in the bottom left. Not much left here at the natural. And a Zerg opponent has uh, one base here that's just now getting up. This one is got this one was killed. So as far as mining bases go, it is favoring Cass. And he's got that huge amount of minerals. Um, one thing I want to see here is the thing I see here is that the Zerg player just has so much gas built up. He really, really needs to spin that gas so he gets more high-tech units. And here we have Spire coming out. His planetary fortress should fall in. Oh, no, he's going to lose so many mules here. That's a lot of money lost here um, in that planetary fortress. Didn't even stand a chance against three, five ultras at this point. Just kills everything. But we have Banshees out now. Cast switching back to his air game. Fungo goes down there. It's going to land on them. And the infested swarm eggs will pop out and should be able to clear up the rest of these. No, nope, misses with the fungal there. This uh, Terran army is getting fairly late game. A lot of ravens out here. And the Banshees just controlling the sky. Uh, are we going to see orcs switch to uh, corruptors just to try and regain the sky game? Time will tell. Time will tell. And look at this. He's just got a command center here in his base for orbitals. Why not? Uh oh. A lot of SCVs on idle. So much production here. That's just ridiculous. Base still going over here on the left side. Now we have a big engagement. Is he going to be able to drop any energy or any uh, secret missiles? He does have enough. And there we go. I hear it. He's taking out the infestors. Oh no. There's that beeping noise. And he's doing some good stutter step micro here with these uh, Marauders and Marines to get these Brood Lords, or, or these, uh, these, uh-oh, that was a little bit of lag there, versus these Ultralisks. What is my computer doing? I don't know why my computer just took a shit fit there, but anyways, here we go, back in and out. Uh, drop on the left side of here, and Cass is going to be able to take out another base here so quick that this... Marauder 3-3 Marine combination just kills hatchery so fast. And it should be able to get stopped here. Nice fungal. There we go. You gotta have those fungals with those ultras if you really want these ultras to be cost effective. Otherwise, you're just gonna have those Marines and Marauders kite you all day long. So another base gonna go down here for it. Man, just cost is so good at just hitting these bases and just trading bases so cost effectively with orcs. Just like, you know what? Cool hatchery, I'm gonna go kill it. You know, sure you kill a marauder or whatever. Doesn't matter. He'll trade marauders for uh, hatcheries all day long. So where are the ravens at? I knew he had a couple of them. Seems like one's left here. This game goes down in the middle. And uh, that force lift up once again. Both players really actively stopping each other from mining as much as possible. Well, let's check out the units. Have. Where, how many ravens does he have? He's got seven. Where the hell are his seven ravens at? Oh, okay, here they are. He's got enough for a couple more seeker missiles. And this army is looking pretty sick here for Cass. I'm kind of feeling a little bit worried for Oric. He is behind in supply. He's behind in macro. Cass is an amazing supply and a pretty good macro at this point. We've got Broodlords on the way. Greater Spire is going to be coming out eventually. I mean, in a couple hours when it's this Greater Spire <laughs> finishes. Mining once again on the right side here for Cass. This base on the left is going to be able to get up. He's got a siege tank up there. Some Marines and Marauders defending that. And he's going to build some uh, command centers around it. Probably for proxy uh, or actually just for... Uh, Planetary Fortresses, and once again, Orc going to take up this base in the bottom right. Cast not one to split his army up too terribly much here. Trying to keep the majority of his army together. And 13 Marines coming out right now in one Raven. He's got enough gas to spend it on those Ravens. You can, as you can see, they're about 1,000 each. And this game is heating up now. Uh, how long is this 26-minute game? Jeez, guys, come on I gotta go do my laundry tonight still. Raven's pushing forward here, allowing them to see the uh, creep tomb. Is there no reason to use a uh, scant? You've got seven Ravens running around. Here we go. Doesn't even need a fungal. He's just got so many Zerglings. And there goes the fungal. Oh, if he can kill those four Metavacs, that would be very nice. There are actually just three there. Corruptors are out. There goes this Hunter Secret Missiles going straight for the uh, uh, Ultras. And the Ultras kind of brushed that off. Is that, that tickled. Another one going down to the Corruptor. Corruptors take a big hit there. 
And there is just so many secret missiles all over the place here. Another one. Go oh, that one was a big one and another big one. This is crazy. So many secret missiles this game. Cast just trying to be so cost effective with these spellcasters late game. And uh, a big group of infestors there. Both players trying to get this late game uh, spellcaster combination here. Uh, Oric with down in supply loses another infestor there. Infestors are just so hard to keep alive versus Marine Marauder um, compared to Ravens. Ravens you can kind of just sneak in there, fly away. They're a little bit easier to control. Uh, so once again, base is down on the left side there very quickly. Both players with insane upgrades so far this game. Uh, not any upgrades yet for the uh, air player. Uh, for, uh, in, for Sorry, for Oric. Not sure about Cass. I know he had some flying units around here. He doesn't have any of the uh, attack upgrades. Nope, none yet. Zergling Harass going down over here to the left side of the map. And not going to accomplish too much. And now the Zerglings are getting back here to the Honey Pop. They're going to take out so many SCVs at this point. But at this point, does Cass really even need that many SCVs? I mean, let's check the worker count. 40 versus... Yeah, I mean, he doesn't even really need these SCVs at this point. He's mining from, what, two bases? And he has, like, I don't know, six orbitals. Uh, actually, these are going to be planetary fortresses. Really wants to keep this base alive. This is essentially, like, this base and this base on the right are his last, you know, quote-unquote bases. This is where the map has been split in half, and both players are saying, all right, you get that half, I get that this half, and we'll just play it out to the end. <sighs> Only one medevac left in the game, and there's a lot of weak units here. So if another stim goes down, uh, Cass's army is going to be very weak, but look at this, the amount of... Uh, energy he's got on these infest these uh, ravens is just crazy. He can just drop seeker missile after seeker missile, but we've got broodlords out. And as far as AA is concerned, he just has a, a lot of marines and uh, some ravens, but he's going to be able to drop some seeker missiles. There we go. Oh, yeah. Taking about half the life off those broodlords. He's going to go for it once again. Throwing a lot. Oh, no. He gets a fungal on all those ravens. He needs to kill those ravens. Get back over there. There we go. Another big fungal marauders pushing and splitting up the rotters. Nice job there, but he's forced to fall back. Another fungal goes down. He really needed to get those Ravens. These Ravens have been a pain in his side. Uh, Cass now with a really low HP Ravens there. And that could have went really badly for Cass if he would have lost those Ravens. Those things are just uh, so, so good late game. Probably going to pull those guys back and do a little bit of repair with those SCVs. Long distance mining for work on the left side of the map and uh, no base on the right. So, I mean, as far as map control goes, it's slowly uh, favoring Cass now. The creep has been pushed back. Cass is now controlling his side of the map and Orc has not had the capability to control his side of the map. We have Ghost coming out now, which is f awesome. Uh, too many Terrans either don't make this transition or make it really, really late. I mean, if you see your opponent's got like 12, 20 infestors. I mean, get a ghost. You don't even have to get the energy upgrade. Just get one ghost and just land one EMP. That's like 10 less fungals you have to worry about. Uh, especially this late game, whenever you can essentially build whatever you want and you've got money for it. You've got tech. You've got every other tech. Why not? And here we go. Infestors dropping some infested Terran eggs here and they are going to kill all those SCVs and mules. Focus fire down on the orbital. It is dropping so fast there. Whoa, they only have one attack upgraded, though, unfortunately. Not doing as much damage as they could. And this orbital is just going to outrun it. 1.94. Well, actually, it's the exact same speed. Attack over here on the left. And the fungal is going to go down. He's not going to be able to take out this hatchery. The ultra is in the fungal. Cleans that up very quickly. Drop over here on the right. It's not going to see anything. But we have infestors also down here in the bottom left. Going to kill a lot of SCVs. And they're just out of range here. And they're going to do a lot of damage, but look at this big attack here. Stim goes forward. He's got the, uh-oh, secret missiles. Listen to that. That's the sound you don't want to hear as a Zerg player, especially if you have Broodlords. And the Infestors come get a huge fungal. Look at how low HP those Marines and Marauders are. No medevacs to be seen. And then the, oh, he's just chasing them down with these Ravens. Doesn't even care. Oh, no. More, more, more. Oh, and I got both of them. And another one going to the Corruptors. Oh, he splits them up a little bit there. And the Marauders and Ravens just pushing their way forward, blasting through this base. The Marauders are so low. If he had about 30 Zerglings, maybe a little bit more than that, he could just come through here and kill all these Marauders. 10 life on most of these guys, 45 on another. Um, just the Ravens. The Ravens are doing so much damage here. And Orc has just no money. He's got nothing. He's making two more Broodlords, which won't be enough. Cass has the Ravens. He can just walk in there and just spam some missile turrets, or sorry, some Seeker missiles on him, and that's exactly what he's going to do probably right here. He's just waiting for it. There we go. Never mind. He's just going to throw down auto turrets. He's like, you know what? Auto turrets are cool too. 
Good game, well played, Cass. For sure, for sure. So while this game went to the length here, 34 minute long game, uh, Cass definitely playing greedy early game. So, 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 so greedy. You couldn't get more greedy as a Terran player. He went for a triple base and he teched against a Zerg player who went like a slow third base. I think if Org, that was really his chance to take his advantage that game, is if he would have went for any type of pressure early game, it would have been a completely different ball game. Cass wouldn't have this huge lead going on into the mid and late game. And it would have just been a completely different game. Uh, unfortunately, Org didn't notice it until too late. But anyways, it gave us a great game. We saw so many secret missiles, uh, ravens all over the place. Cass did a really good job of just taking his marauders and marines, just killing hatchery after hatchery after hatchery. So many hatcheries killed this game. And Orc on his own right was doing a lot of counter pressure. He went there with Zerglings and Festers, a lot of pressure. As much as possible, just not enough. Not as much as Cass was throwing down. And Cass could afford it just because he had all that early game macro play. So, hope you guys enjoyed watching this commentary. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to like and subscribe and share if you feel like it. See you later.